Hi everyone, Bernina Jeff here at High Fashion Sewing Machines in Grand Junction, Colorado. It's March 1st, so it's time to do some spring cleaning on our sewing machine. So I'm going to show you some tricks to keep it clean and running. Sometimes there's a long wait to get to your dealer, so this will help out you and your machine. Um, again, anytime you want to ask questions, 970-256-1293. You can use that number to order products. Just call the store and we'll help you out. So let's go ahead and take a look. One of the things that really is helpful is a small vacuum cleaner. So this is one I found on Amazon. You can get them on eBay. You can get them on Walmart.com. It's a 2.5 gallon wet dry vac. You can get one gallon ones. You just want to make sure it's 110 volt and then uh, it has good suction power. The ones you plug into your vacuum or your cigarette lighter in your car just don't have enough power. And then you're going to want a closer here a little micro vacuum set we sell these at the store for $17.99 plus shipping and they have all your attachments so I'm going to show you how this works we're going to take the neck down attachment put it on the end of our 1.25 or one and a quarter inch hose that's pretty standard and then we're going to hook up a nice flexible hose that comes with the kit and then there's a lot of attachments I like this small little crevice tool. So this little crevice tool, it's going to have enough power to take care of the little dust bunnies and stuff inside our sewing machine. But just to show you, you know, it's not only good for your sewing machine. We can uh, get all those little snippy corners and stuff. So, you know, we look for that too. So just store that guy underneath your sewing machine so it's handy or in a closet. So let's prep the machine for cleaning. So first off, we're going to look real close here. We're going to snip our thread. Always snip the thread at the top, raise the presser foot and pull it out through the needle. The reason we do that is if we don't, it all gets jammed up in the, in the tension unit area. Most of the modern machines are all closed up here so that thread pulls backwards, debris accumulates in there, and then your tension unit will not work properly. That's a $100 fix, so you can buy a lot of thread for $100. So now let's remove the presser foot. I have the dual feed engaged, so I'm gonna pull it down into the back. There's a dual feed. I'm gonna take the foot off, remove the needle. Now, a lot of manuals say turn off the machine at this point. That's the lawyers talking so you don't hurt yourself. So I'm gonna leave the light on because I like the have some light for this programming or this filming. So we're gonna push down. I sometimes use two fingers to push down on the little target or the little circles there and lift up and pull forward. If you push to the back, this will get stuck back there and you'll be wiggling on that for 10 minutes to get it out. Make sure the back side of the uh, needle plate has all three clips. I sell those for $2.99. A lot of people, they break off real easy. If they get bent, you bend them back and they break little screw that attaches to them. Then I've already done this filming once so it's nice and clean. We're gonna we're gonna clean here. I like to use a combination of the brush and the vacuum cleaner. So here we go with a little noise just to demonstrate. So I got the little crevice tool on there and then just like a dentist get in there and get all the little places. Now let's work down below. So let's take the bobbin and the bobbin case out. We're going to open up the lace cover and we're gonna pull the hook out. So on the hook, you wanna make sure it's clean on the inside. I actually give it a little drip of oil right where the spring attaches to that, uh, right behind that screw. So there's a, shaft in the middle there that needs to rotate. Every couple weeks you want to get the pads inside this um, oiled. You know, set that off to the side. Now I usually use an old spool of thread, any spool of thread, to kind of lift up the machine so I can look inside there. Another tool to have for um, your sewing drawer is a pen light. So you want a light so you can actually see inside there. Now, inside here are two little drive pins. This pin right here, 
thread wraps around there a lot of times. So you want to take your Bernina tool. This is the best $4.99 investment you'll ever make is having a good Bernina tweezers. So I'll do one of those drive pins and I'll rotate the hand wheel with my other hand and then make sure there's no thread around there. Now underneath, there's a little slot between the black and the silver and you can take a little tool and you can actually uh, get out the dust bunnies and stuff from using this little tool. It's another $4.99 tool and I call it the, uh, the thread hook. So it's just a good way to kind of get inside there. Earlier, I got a big old dust bunny and hooked right on the corner. Then you can use your vacuum cleaner, get into all the little nooks and crannies with the uh, crevice tool and uh, suck out any of the uh, dust from there. Okay, so now let's go up. This little uh, head plate comes off. So you take a 20 T tool, 20 Torx. You have one with your machine. It looks like a Allen wrench. It looks L-shaped. And you can take this screw out the head, lift up right here where it says Bernina, lift up and out, and this will come off. It's kind of tight when they're fresh. Now this is when I'd recommend turning the machine off because you don't want to touch any electronics in there while it's turned on. And use your light, dust and such accumulate right in here and threads will accumulate right in there where I'm showing. So use your tweezers, use your brush, and right down in here, this is the end of your needle bar, and you'll want to brush off all that lint. And again, this might be something to do before you do lower, because it looks like the lint always wants to go downward, so you'd have to be vacuuming that again. And this is just where you want to look. And as long as it's open, you can use your red oil. I also sell a yellow cap oil. This yellow cap oil is designed for any moving parts except the hook. So uh, if all you have is the red cap oil, it'll get you by. So there's a crank area right here. You want to give a little drip of oil. There's a crank area right there. And then this needle bar, look at it and you see where it goes up and down inside. So I'm going way inside. I'm going there. So I'm giving you a little drip of oil on the needle bar because that's going up and down literally a million times. And anything that I see as metal on metal turning, I will give it a drip right there. Over here doesn't require any oiling, so don't, don't oil on the left hand side. Then to reassemble this cover, bring it in about 45 degree angle and put these two tabs in. Then you have to pull it out and then in so it hits flush up there. So you want to make sure that's flush. When everything's flush, you want to put the screw back in before you lose it. If the screw doesn't line up, make sure everything's flush and snug. Don't white knuckle that. So hopefully with these extra tools and tips, you will uh, be able to keep your sewing machine running. A couple other good tools is a magnet. So I have a a magnet with a uh, end on it and if your dentist gives you back the dental tools they use or if you can buy dental tools they're good to get in there and pick at if the tweezers can't hit so a used dental tool works great so once again this is Bernina Jeff at High Fashion Sewing uh, my email is jpvlefty that's j as in Jeff p as in Peter v as in Victor l-e-f-t-y at aol.com or you can call the shop, 970-256-1293. Uh, please call to order any oil or parts. And I do have these uh, micro vacuum cleaner kits purchased ahead, so you can buy those from me. Thanks again.